are you? Good, how are you doing? Hey, good, Paul. Welcome to the, uh, the Town and Spy Media Recording Studio. This is our global headquarters. Wow. So come in. Great. First up for our spy entrepreneur profiles is Tim Curidan, the founder and owner of Rise Up Coffee. He arrived at our state-of-the-art spy studio with his son, Koa, to talk about his entrepreneurial journey. My name is Tim Curidan. I am a homegrown entrepreneur, and this is my spy profile. How did you come up with the name Rise Up? I was a Peace Corps guy. I am a Peace Corps guy. While in the Peace Corps, I developed a really great friendship and still he's, he's like a brother to me. We were on a, a little island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and I shared with him my idea that maybe one day I would, I would start you know, a coffee shop. And he shared with me that he was going to go on to med school and he said, but you know, I, I've always thought about having a, you know, an organic, fully sustainable coffee shop in Hawaii and I would name it Rise Up Coffee. And I said, you know what? <laughs> You're going to do the whole medicine thing. What if, what if I were to uh, use that name? You know, at that time, every name, every cool name in coffee is taken. So I was quite sure that Rise Up must be taken. Amazingly, it wasn't. Can you tell me about the very, very earliest days when you were starting up your the trailer in St. Michael's, which you know I frequent regularly, and what that was like as a startup experience and what you learned from that? I was running a uh, outdoor education summer camp uh, at the time when I had traveled out west and seen these uh, little coffee drive-throughs and thought, you know, why wouldn't that work? back east. So it was with that that camp where, and talk about connections again, uh, this bank manager sent her kids to the camp that I was running and she trusted me. And she gave me a $16,000 business equipment loan before I ever had a business. And I used that $16,000 and I purchased this little tin can, this little trailer, and I logoed it up with uh, drink organic coffee and serving a sip of the world but we needed a place to put it and uh once again that camp and the connections with that camp it's camp right uh, over on uh, ken island and i used camp right letterhead to write this letter to glenn higgins of higgins crab house fame and so i explained to him in this letter what uh, i intended to do which was to utilize his parking lot and put this trailer there he says he went to throw that letter away three times and it wouldn't leave his hand. And he said, you know, Tim, I'm gonna let you do it, but there's no way that this county's gonna let you do it. And he was right. We got a cease and desist letter a week before we, we opened. And uh, luckily we were able to get a temporary uh, permit to open. And it came down to a, a vote. County council members voted three to two in our favor. And uh, you talk about uh, anxiety times. We opened on a random Tuesday, March 15th of 2005, with somewhat of a line. There was three people waiting for us to open, and I'll never forget the first customer. His name is Bob. It was a big order. He ordered a large cup of coffee, a bag of coffee, and a bagel with cream cheese. And off we went. The sign outside your Easton store says, grown by friends, roasted by friends, and enjoyed by friends. What does that mean? That phrasing, grown by friends, roasted by friends, and enjoyed by friends, it really sums it all up. I was a very reluctant businessman. I uh, got into uh, business as a way to make a living, but really to uh, try to do the most good, uh, have the most fun, make the most friends. And what really intrigued me about coffee was sort of the global connection of it. And, you know, what's really exciting is for Rise Up, those bags in our roastery don't just represent countries of origin, they represent farms, families, villages. Really, they represent our friends. Roasted by friends, we are now 172 amazing individuals strong as a company. And these are my friends.
Coffee is about anything, it's about connection. Over this time, 15 years, this is our 15th year in business. And then the whole thing is made possible by our friends on the other side of the counter. Rise Up has always been places that we build for you. These are for our customers to enjoy and uh, we've never shied away from the fact that our customers are our friends. Morning. Could I have a small uh, whole milk latte? Yeah, for sure. You know, in St. Michael's, we have seen these folks on a daily basis for 15 years. This develops quite a strong uh, relationship. Thank, Thank you. you. Have, have a good day. day. See ya. Bye bye. Some of them have shared with us what they thought of us initially, which was, wow, what nice people. Too bad they're not going to make it. I feel very fortunate that we were naive enough to try it and then, you know, young enough to kind of stick in there. The retail coffee business is a very crowded space with huge companies like Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts and regional players who dominate in various areas. Why has Rise Up, you know, been successful in the face of that kind of competition? Well, I think through the Rise Up experience, what makes us different than the companies that you just mentioned, these larger companies. You know, we have nine locations. I think Starbucks has something like 7,000 locations. The challenge for Howard Schultz and the gang at Starbucks is, is a very, very daunting task, which is to have everyone connected, committed, knowledgeable, and finding that fulfillment in, in what they're doing. And uh, to staff that amount of stores is, must be a <laughs> really difficult task. But for us, you know, we've always just focused on being the best rise up possible. It's that dedication to staying humble. You know, somebody said to me years ago that when you're self-employed, you wake up sort of unemployed every day and you have to earn your paycheck. And that's the approach of, of Rise Up Coffee. Your partner, Noah Kegley, seems to be a very important part of your business. Can you tell us about him and what he means to the business? I'm glad you, you brought up Noah. He was the, and still is, the, the greatest worker I'd ever seen. Just in terms of his ability to get things done, communicate effectively, give it the, the effort that's necessary, and to enjoy the whole process along the way. That's a very special deal. We're talking about a lifelong friendship. So in Rehoboth, I noticed that you're offering alcoholic beverages. How does that fit into your strategy? One thing we're experimenting with is uh, this bar concept uh, and serving alcohol as part of our full day uh, of offerings for our customers. Uh, this is a trend in specialty coffee. This is one that we have, have had on our radar for quite some time. We're actually going to bring it right here to Easton at our headquarters project. Uh, so this idea of kitchen, cafe, and bar is something that we're committed to going forward. And I would say that the 502 bar, of all the things we've ever done in business, I wouldn't put too many things above that concept and the way it's been received. It's, it's been a gigantic smash. There's lots of rumors about your purchase of this location on Dover and you're opening up a burger place with your brother. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, yes, we're opening Rood Burger at 4 South Aurora Street. Uh, this is my brother and I. His name is Brett Kirton. He's been a chef for 28 years. Uh, for 15 years, we've been actively looking for a way to partner and Rood Burger will be it. So Rood Burger is quite simply burgers and beer, craft burgers and craft beer. Of course, there'll be vegetarian and vegan options, healthier sides, milkshakes and cocktails. That'll open uh, early spring this year. So tell me about the new facility that you were going to build across the street from your existing location on Dover. This is the question that I get asked the most. When will the headquarters be built? And I, I joke that I should get a t-shirt with the answer, which is uh, as soon as humanly possible. But we will break ground this March and we are so excited. Wait until you see. This will be the end all be all of Rise of Coffees. Tell me about the most exciting expansion plan or new product that you're coming out with in the next year or so, year or two. So on the Rise Up side of things, the, the product that we're most excited about, we've been working on our own tea line uh, for quite some time, and that will be called Water and Leaf. So this is a, a brand new approach to our teas 
And this is, again, one of these trends in specialty coffee that we've been following, uh, health and wellness, and you're gonna see the introduction of cold pressed juices, healthier grab and go items. You know, so water and leaf is the thing that we're most excited about. What makes Easton the right place to have your headquarters and live and do all of this? So for us, Easton is our home base. What's wonderful here is when we construct the headquarters across the street, Easton will be our home for the rest of our time in coffee. The level of support that we've, we've gotten here in Easton is uh, mind-blowing on a, on a per-moment basis. Honestly, what happens in our little shoebox of a cafe is completely wild and, and we certainly didn't predict it. What we're building across the street will be a rise up that can handle that volume, that level of support, uh, and it will be a celebration of that level of support. And once we get across the street and out of the, the coffee roastery's hair, as it were, it will grow into its shell and give us the capacity for uh, all of our years to come. This area, the Eastern Shore, Easton, St. Michael's, the surrounding communities, this was blue water in terms of what we, what we do. Sort of to be the, the first, uh, first man in and to uh, bring our, our approach to it. When I think back to our earliest times, when I kind of knew that, that we had uh, something really special, of course we had connected uh, with our teachers, lawyers, uh, local representatives, but uh, it was when I saw the heavy water carriers of our society, the contractors, the laborers, the crabbers, they felt a connection to Rise Up too, that the word had gotten out that this was a safe place. And that's really what we're all about. When uh, folks uh, drive up to a Rise Up or walk into a Rise Up, we want everyone to feel that same level of connection, to know that it is their place. Thank you for being our first home entrepreneur.